The Predimit trial was a study conducted in Spain that divided 7,447 people between the ages of 55 and 80 who were at high risk of developing heart disease, but with no heart disease at enrollment into three groups. Two of the three groups had to follow a high-fat Mediterranean diet. One of these two groups had to consume a liter of olive oil a week. The other had to consume the same amount of calories that the other group consumed in olive oil, but in nuts. The control group had to follow a low-fat Mediterranean diet. After five years, the olive oil and the nut group had a significantly lower incidence of major cardiovascular events, while the low-fat group had worse cardiovascular health. I should also mention that the olive oil and the nut group had better memory after the five years, but brain health is something I'll talk about in another video. But in conclusion, for better cardiovascular health, eat plenty of healthy unsaturated fats like nuts and olive oil. Canola oil has a bad reputation for a few reasons, as it's an omega-6 fat that is usually sprayed with Roundup. But if you can find a high-quality organic canola oil that isn't genetically modified, it might be a good idea to add it to your diet. Canola oil contains alpha-linoleic acid, ALA, something that can be really good to prevent heart attacks and other heart problems. In a study called the Lyon Heart Study, participants who had had a heart attack were placed in one of two diets that they had to follow for five years. One of the two groups had to follow a Mediterranean diet plus a spread that contained ALA, while the other group had to follow a low-fat diet. The purpose of the study was to see if ALA could significantly lower the risk of cardiovascular events, but the researchers couldn't finish it. They had to halt the study after three years because they saw how the group following the Mediterranean diet with added ALA had significantly fewer heart attacks than the group following the low-fat diet, and it would have been a unethical to keep the low-fat diet group on that diet. With that said, although a Mediterranean diet without ALA is generally considered to be healthy, the heart health of the Mediterranean diet group was attributed to the alpha-linoleic acid found in the participants' blood rather than to the other foods they were consuming. With that said, if you don't like canola oil or simply can't find a high-quality one, you can instead consume flaxseed oil, as it also contains alpha-linoleic acid and is likely to be good for your heart. Studies have shown that high omega-3 levels significantly reduce the risk of premature death. In one study involving more than 42,000 people, the subjects with the highest levels of EPA, DHA, and DPA reduced their risk of death from all causes by 15 to 18 percent when compared to the subjects with the lowest omega-3 levels. One 11 year study that followed more than 2,000 people in their 60s without cardiovascular disease found that the ones with high omega-3 levels Levels significantly reduce their risk of heart disease. After the 11 years, the non-smokers with high levels of omega-3 fatty acids had a survival rate of 85%, while the smokers with low omega-3 levels had a survival rate of 47%. Interestingly enough, both smokers with high omega-3s and non-smokers with low omega-3s had a survival rate of 71%, so having low omega-3 levels is basically as bad as smoking. There are other studies showing that omega-3 fatty acids help keep your blood pressure on the lower side, as well as thin so it doesn't clot, and studies showing that they lower bad cholesterol and triglycerides. Omega-3s are also antiarrhythmic, meaning that they help the heart stay in rhythm, as well as anti-inflammatory. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, it's a good idea to take an algae omega-3 fatty acid supplement containing both EPA and DHA. With all that said, in the longevity paradox, Dr. Stephen Gundry recommends taking an 81 mg safety-coated aspirin just a few times a week because aspirin contains salicylic acid, something that helps activate omega-3s, although definitely talk to your doctor if you're planning to take aspirin often. Beets are a wonderful root vegetable that can be great for your heart. Dr. Rhonda Patrick personally used them to lower her mother's and mother-in-law's blood pressure, and apparently, it worked great, although this wasn't a clinical trial. But other studies have shown beets to lower blood pressure, improve heart health, improve blood flow to the brain, and even improve endurance performance. Just remember to eat them raw, because if you eat them cooked, they can significantly raise your blood sugar. 
In The 4-Hour Body, Tim Ferriss tells us that donating blood from time to time can improve heart health and help us live longer. Apparently, postmenopausal women have a similar incidence of heart attack to men, and a lot of researchers suspect that this is because postmenopausal women no longer bleed as often, so their iron levels rise significantly. Bleeding lowers iron levels, which improves insulin sensitivity, lowers the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease, and lowers the risk of heart attack. So donating blood every now and then may be a good idea. If that's not convincing enough, hear this. Researchers in Denmark and in Sweden noticed that healthy individuals who donated blood frequently lived significantly longer than healthy individuals who didn't. And in one study, researchers fed iron to a group of roundworms and they ended up dying younger. If you're afraid of needles, consider consuming Pewer tea often. According to Dr. Stephen Gundry, Pewer tea helps lower iron levels. Just like exercise, regular sauna use can improve blood pressure, lower bad cholesterol, improve heart health, and reduce inflammation. Different studies done in patients with coronary artery disease, peripheral artery disease, hypertension, and left ventricular dysfunction have shown that regular sauna use can help patients with any of these cardiovascular conditions. A study that followed 2,300 middle-aged men in Finland for over 20 years discovered that those who used the sauna just once a week were twice as likely to get heart attacks, develop heart disease and other age-related diseases than those who use the sauna up to seven times a week. To be more precise, Finnish studies show that men who use the sauna anywhere between two and three times a week are 22% less likely to experience sudden cardiac death, while those who use the sauna anywhere between four and seven times a week are 63% less likely to experience sudden cardiac death. Yeast cells live about 30% longer if they're placed in a hot environment that is hot enough to be uncomfortable, but of course, not hot enough to kill them. Staying in a hot sauna for anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes can increase heart rate to 100, and even 150 beats per minute depending on the temperature. Stressing it just enough to make the heart stronger the same way intense physical exercise does. If you have strong bones and teeth, you have calcium to thank for that. But calcium isn't always good for you. A lot of it can end up in your joints, soft tissues and arteries, harming your entire body. But calcified arteries are especially problematic, as they can cause severe heart problems and increase the risk of heart attack. Vitamin K2 has proven to help with that, as it removes the calcium in the arteries and other parts of the body and places it in the bones and teeth where calcium should be. Taking a high quality vitamin vitamin K2 supplement may be a good idea, but if you're not going to take it for whatever reason, know that a Japanese dish called natto, which is basically fermented soybeans, is the food with the highest vitamin K2 content, but most people can't stand the taste. So as I said, maybe consider taking a supplement. Resveratrol is a molecule found in trace amounts in red wine and a few other foods, and studies suggest that it might be good at preventing age-related diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's and help us live longer. At the very least, resveratrol-fed rats live longer, but even if it doesn't work as well on humans, it at the very least appears to be good for the heart. Harvard professor of genetics and author Dr. David Sinclair has been taking resveratrol for almost two decades at this point, and he said that his heart is very healthy for his age. But of course, he's an N of 1. So let's talk about some studies. In one study, patients who had had a heart attack were given 10 mg of resveratrol every day for 3 months. And this resulted in a significant decrease in LDL cholesterol and an improvement in overall heart health. In another study, resveratrol-fed obese mice had hearts and arteries that were as healthy as those of thin mice. They also had more mitochondria, healthier livers, lower levels of inflammation, lower blood sugar levels, less cancer, less Alzheimer's, and longer lives. In yet another study, after resveratrol was fed to monkeys on a really unhealthy diet, it reversed their arterial stiffness. To keep things short, I'll just briefly mention that there are other studies showing that resveratrol also works on yeast cells, fruit flies, and roundworms. Although before I move on, I do want to talk about Doron Efrat, founder and CEO of Mega Resveratrol. Efrat was lucky enough to survive a heart attack in 2003 and began looking for supplements that could help him improve his heart health. 
He read about the heart health benefits of resveratrol and has been taking a high quality resveratrol supplement ever since. And last I checked, he was still alive. I don't know him personally and I'm not sponsoring his product, but if you're looking for a supplement that could improve your cardiovascular health, maybe check out Mega Resveratrol or some other high quality resveratrol brand. Having said that, there is a problem with resveratrol. The body has a hard time absorbing it, but this can be fixed when it's consumed with fat. David Sinclair mixes 1 gram of resveratrol powder with a few spoons of full fat yogurt. I like to mix it with mashed avocado and extra virgin olive oil. Study after study shows that people who floss their teeth on a regular basis have healthier hearts than people who don't floss and have poor dental hygiene. Of course, correlation doesn't mean causation, and some people believe that the reason why people who floss have healthier hearts is because they are, in general, more health conscious than people who don't. To me, this makes sense, but from what I've read, poor dental hygiene can indeed have a negative effect on your cardiovascular health, regardless of your lifestyle. As the microbes in your mouth can get into your bloodstream and end up in your heart. In fact, a study found that a bacteria commonly found in the mouth called varied and strep, which is known to cause cavities, is found in other parts of the body in 84% of stroke victims. So always brush your teeth properly, floss regularly, and if you can, do oil pulling. Oil pulling is an ancient practice that will nourish, clean, and detoxify your gums and teeth and even reduce inflammation. It will also improve your breath and whiten your teeth. This is how you do it. Swish a tablespoon of coconut oil around your mouth for anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes on an empty stomach. The oil will pull bacteria and parasites from your gums and teeth. When you're done, spit it out in the toilet. You don't have to do this every day. Once a week is probably good enough, but the more you do it, the better. Multiple studies have demonstrated that eating a lot of animal products can increase one's risk of developing not only heart disease, but also cancer. In fact, in the blue zones, the regions of the world where people live the longest, plant-based diets are one of the few things they all have in common. The blue zones are Okinawa, Japan, Icaria, Greece, Ogliastra, Italy, Nicoya, Costa Rica, and Loma Linda, California. And the people in these regions were living very long and healthy lives consuming very little animal animal products. If we don't consume animal protein, or at the very least, not as much, an enzyme called mTOR is inhibited. When this happens, cells spend less energy dividing and the body enters a state called autophagy. In a state of autophagy, the body recycles damaged and misfolded proteins, something that prolongs the life of different organisms. If you are going to eat animal protein, eat small wild-caught fish such as sardines and anchovies, as they are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids acids, and aren't as contaminated with as much mercury as bigger fish like tuna and swordfish. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.